Hi, hello, and welcome to the video. Today we're getting into the first part of probably many declutters. Today I'm starting out with primers, setting sprays, foundations, concealers, and powders, face powders. Not even bronzers or blushes. This is just the beginning. So let's dig through my stuff and see what I'm going to keep and what I'm going to toss. If you like these kinds of videos, don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. It helps me out, and let's go. All right, starting out with primers. Let's get into it. As we go through, I have what I'm going to keep, what I'm going to donate, and what is expired and needs to go in the garbaggio. So I'm just going to kind of like grab bag style. This is the Euphoria pre Green Primer. I like it, so I'm going to keep it. It does have an expiry date, and it is not until November of this year, so still good. I'm going to keep this it. This is the Rare Beauty Illuminating Primer. I haven't had this for very long. I enjoy it. Keeping. And I use this as a primer, the M Beauty Face Glaze. It's like a glowy base. I don't see an expiry date, and I don't know how long I've had it, but I do like it, so I'm going to keep it. Jane Iredale Smooth, Smooth Affair Face Primer. They just sent to me gonna keep it I liked it iconic London underglow blurring primer I like this not expired yet gonna keep it elf power grip primer this is a pretty new tube for me keeping undone beauty illuminating primer oil I really like this with drier foundations they sent it to me not too long ago keeping this is the Tula skincare filter primer I've only used this once or twice and I wasn't that impressed so I'm going to give it away the Lip Bar Skin Smoothing Primer. I like it, it actually does smooth the skin. Keeping Pacifica Kind Glaze. This is like a very sheer glow to the skin. So maybe dabbed over my cheekbones for a no makeup day. That might be really nice, so I am gonna keep it. The Essence Hello Good Stuff Glow Serum Primer. It's supposed to be a dupe for the Glow Recipe Niacinamide Primer, and it actually is. I just don't reach for it that often, and I'm going to pass it along to a friend or family member. Pure Rose Gold No Filter Primer. This is a beautiful primer. I mean, really underrated, but this purple sticker right here lets me know that I've had it for at least two years, so it has got to go in the garbage. And this 4-in-1 Correcting Primer was sent to me not too long ago. Still has the seal on it, so I'm going to pass this one along to a friend or family member. The Ulta Beauty Primer Water. It's nice and it does what it says it does, but I don't really reach for a primer water. I typically use like a spray on serum or just a serum in general. And there's quite a bit left, so I'm going to pass it on. The Cali Ray So Blown Blurring Primer. I like, I do need to use it more, so I'm going to keep it so I can really get my thoughts about it. The Grown Alchemist Anti-Pollution Primer has a really unique texture and it really did kind of fill in pores that were a little bit larger on my skin, so I liked it. I'm keeping it. Peach and Lily is a brand I love, but I never reach for this Skin Shield Blurring Primer. Um, for no particular reason, I just don't reach for it and I think that somebody else will. This Milani SPF BFF is a fantastic primer. Happens to have 30 SPF in there as well. Definitely recommend this, but I know mine is old. Yep, right here, uh, the expiry day is September of 22, so in the garbage it goes. Sample size of the EXA Jumpstart Smoothing Primer. This is a fairly recent sample I've received. It's like Calorie, I don't really have enough experience using it to have an opinion one way or the other so i'm going to keep it and if it's still not something i'm reaching for in the next declutter then it'll be going so it's it's on the watch list if you will you notice a trend i like illuminating primers this one is from flower beauty radiant glow primer i liked it and it works really well it's always good to compare and contrast all the glowy things so i'm going to keep it i really enjoy this primer from refi it is a glow and sculpt primer. And what's really cool about it is the applicator on here. It's like a face roller and it definitely leaves a nice glowy finish. So I'm gonna keep this one because I know it's not expired yet. 
e.l.f. Suntouchable Woe Glow. It does say makeup primer right here, so I threw it into the category. I didn't even throw all my sunscreens in here. This is wonderful, beautifully glowy, keeping for sure. Milk Hydra Grit Primer, I am going to keep as well. Um, it's always good to have this one and the e.l.f. one to compare to each other. This is the Hydra Grip Eye Primer. I had it with my face primers because I used it under my eyes before concealer. Didn't really like it for that purpose. I don't really like it for a purpose of a regular eyeshadow primer, so I'm going to pass it along. And then last but not least is the Bare Minerals Primetime Hydrate and Glow Primer. This is kind of underwhelming for how much it costs. It doesn't have as much glow as I like, and it could be more moisturizing. So because I have a bunch of glowy moisturizing things I'm already keeping, I'm going to pass this one along. Now we're transitioning to setting sprays. Starting with the Pretty Mist from Root Pretty. I do enjoy this mist. I like to use this as a both before and after spray, so I'm going to keep this. The e.l.f. Dewy Coconut Setting Mist is really good. It really is. The spray is fantastic, so I'm going to keep this one. The Pure Lit Mist is one of my favorite setting sprays. It has some mica running through it, so it's definitely going to give you a glow. It is cruelty-free, vegan-friendly. Love the sprayer, keeping for sure. The Sephora Makeup Setting Spray. I still don't know if the Sephora brand products are cruelty-free or not. I'm leaning more towards they're not. Um, I got this because it's supposed to be a dupe for the Urban Decay All-Nighter Spray, but I just need to buy that because I know Urban Decay is cruelty-free, so I'm going to pass this along. I'm sure it's fine, just passing it along. The Milani Make It Last Original Setting Spray is one of the most long-wearing setting sprays I have, so I'm definitely keeping her. Euphoria Pre-Game Skin Moisturizing Setting Spray. I need to use this more to get my full thoughts on it, but I love everything Euphoria, so of course I had to support them. And yeah, like with some primers, I just need to play with it more, so I'm gonna keep it. The Milk Hydra Grip Set and Refresh Spray. I don't reach for this much. I mean, I have used quite a bit. I just have to get rid of some things and this isn't extraordinary enough for me to keep it. The Flower Beauty Seal the Deal Setting Spray I'm going to keep because I'm currently comparing it to the Rare Beauty Always an Optimus Setting Spray. I think these two have really similar formulas and once I decide which one I like better I can get one rid of one or the other but I'm almost halfway through this Rare Beauty one anyway. So long story. Short, keeping them both. This is the In Beauty Project Dual Phase Setting Mist. This is almost an exact dupe to the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Spray. So you definitely don't need both. They're very, very, very similar. I feel like I've had this for over a year, so I'm going to trash it. I have just the teensiest bit left of my Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray from Charlotte Tilbury. This is an amazing setting spray. It really does make your makeup last and stay in place. My only hesitation is that, it's, it's, is that it is expensive. So I'm going to keep it so I can empty it. Jane Iredale just sent this one to me. The Palm Mist Hydration Spray. It works really well with their powder foundation. I liked the smell of it, so I'm going to keep it. Half Magic sent over there setting spray. This is the Dew Lock setting spray and it does leave you with a hyper glowy finish. Very shiny dewy finish without any glitter. Kelly Ray Surf Proof setting spray. Um, I definitely agree that it is hydrating. It says it's long wearing. I have not tested that and I would like to. Still pretty new to the market, so I'm gonna do some testing on it to see if it is indeed long lasting. I really need to keep testing it. I picked up this setting spray, the Glow Mist from Ulta Beauty, because I saw that it had bits of mica in it, it's like the Lit Mist from Pure, so I thought, ooh, maybe we have a dupe on our hands. But this one in particular has tea tree oil in it, and I don't like the smell of that. I was just kind of underwhelmed. It didn't excite. It didn't 
I mean, necessarily disappoint. I'm just going to pass it along. Exa's new dual phase dual shield set setting spray. And it too is extremely glowy. I love when you mix it together, it turns purple because that's my favorite color. It does have a bit of oil in it. Therefore, if you are oily already, it might not be the one for you. But I like, I am dry, so I'm gonna keep it. Oh, not a good sign when they don't fit in that little box. The Watermelon Glow Ultra Fine Mist from Glow Recipe. I bought this because everybody said it was awesome and I just don't think it's as awesome as everybody says. The spray from Flower Beauty, the spray from Rare Beauty, very, very similar. So I'm gonna pass this along because I know people in my family like Glow Recipe. Peach and Lily Glass Skin Veil Mist. I like to use this before and after makeup. Definitely leaves you with glassy, dewy skin. I'm going to keep it. I love all things Peach and Lily. And last but not least is the Tula Skin Care Signature Glow Refreshing and Brightening Face Mist. I have not used this very much. This was a khaki influence for sure. I know it's not expired and I would like to keep trying it, so it's a keep. The Elf Illuminating Mist and Set. I've never tried it. I just saw it in the store and it's like, hmm, why does nobody talk about that? I wanna know. So still haven't tried it, so I'm gonna keep it so I do try it. Moving on to glowy bases and shimmer goos. Jones Road Beauty Shimmer Face Oil. I like this, I like the texture of it. It can be a little intense sometimes, but I don't have a shimmer goo that is a pale pink like this one, so I'm gonna keep it. The Lisa Eldridge Elevated Glow Highlighter. I don't reach for this very often because it is a little too deep for my skin tone, but I am not going to give it away or throw it away. If anything, I will just collect it because I love how pretty Lisa Eldridge products are. It's the Desert Moon Illuminating Oil from Aether Beauty. My intention is to use this more as the summer months come. So I'm gonna hold on to it for, not to use on my face, but to like put on my decollete and things when it's out and about. So I'm gonna keep it. This is the Think Bright Glow and Hydrate Serum from LYS. And I've used like a quarter of it. It's not my favorite. I do appreciate that it has vitamin C and hyaluronic acid, but it's not something that I continuously reach for because of, of its hydrating properties. Um, it does have a little bit of glimmer to it, but compared to the rest of these shimmer goos, it's not really a whole lot. I just, um, I'll let somebody else try it. Also from LYS is their liquid highlighter. I had it in my, my primer area because if I use this, I have to mix it into something because the, shave, because the shade Brave is too deep for me. So I am going to pass this along. The iconic ELF Halo Glow liquid filter. I'm in the shade one, definitely keeping, has a fair amount of coverage, beautiful glow. The Auric Glow Lust in the shade Morganite. This is the new Morganite that was lighter than the previous one. I have barely used this. I'm going to keep it because I need to use it over everything else. This is a Favy Fave. The Say Glowy Super Gel in Star Glow. This is like basically a glowy water. It feels really nice on the skin but doesn't alter the way makeup looks. I really do like this from Say. Keeping the Nessa Myricks Beauty Oil, this hydrating facial oil, it has some like gold flecks in there. I never use it. I'm going to pass it along. Just have a deeper shade of Halo Glow that I used for bronzer, but I didn't really enjoy it that way, so I'm going to pass that along. These three are serum tints from Undone Beauty. They add just a nice subtle glow perfect for a low or a no makeup day, so I'm keeping these. And here is where the real fun begins. These are my complexion products, starting with skin tints and foundations. Deep breath, here we go. 
Makeup by Mario foundation. I tried this several times and I just could not get to where I liked it, but I will put it in the giveaway or donate rather is a better way to say it. The e.l.f. Flawless Satin Foundation I am going to keep because it's always good to have a drugstore option. And I'm flirting a little bit more with trying to find a matte base product that I like. And when I use this, I do enjoy it, keeping it. House Labs Tricolone Foundation. I really enjoy this. I was skeptical. I'm in the shade 040 and I love it. It lasts all day. It's pigmented and really mimics whatever base product you put underneath it. The EXA High Fidelity Foundation in the shade Therese. I, this is my second bottle of this because I wasn't sure how I felt about it and I repurchased it. it. The past couple times it hasn't been sitting well on my skin and I don't know if that's me or this and I don't want to t pass it along just yet because I still think I can find a way to make it work. The Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Foundation. I'm in the shade 2. This is a little more dry than I would like it to be, but I can make it work depending on how I prep my skin. It is probably getting up to, I know I bought it when she first launched, so it's probably getting up to expired. But even if it were expired, I wouldn't toss it because it's beautiful packaging and definitely a collectible. The Patrick Ta for face foundation and powder. I did not enjoy this product. A lot of us didn't enjoy this product. It just never really sat well on my skin. I found that the cream foundation was very creamy and that the powder in contrast was extremely dry so they didn't work well together. Started to get hard pans. I'm probably just gonna throw this away because I don't know of anybody that would want to use it after I've dipped my fingers in it, to be honest. Westman Atelier Vital, what is it called? Vital Skin Foundation Stick. At first I didn't really like this, but with the Undone Oil Primer, this and that primer love each other and they look so beautiful, so I'm keeping this because it's so easy to wipe on a stick foundation. Another khaki influence was the Chantecai Future Skin Gel Foundation. I am in the shade Aura. This is okay to me. It is definitely more of like a skin tint. Think low makeup day kind of vibes. And um, for now, I'm going to keep it. I know in my heart that it's not a favorite, but I just want to keep it. See if maybe I change my mind. Also have the Elate Cosmetics. Uh, lift full tint and this is the shade UN1. This is supposed to be an alternative to the Future Skin from Chantecaille but I didn't really like how it sat on my skin so I am going to be getting rid of that. The Danessa Myricks Blurring Balm Powder in the shade one is in with my foundations, things like that, because it does have a tint to it. Until like last week or so, I didn't like how this looked and I would have definitely decluttered it, but I tried it with, again, that Undone Beauty oil primer and it actually looked really nice. So it gave me a way to use this again. It Cosmetics Nude Glow. Mm, this is kind of unremarkable. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. I'm going to pass it along. The Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation is one that you definitely have to prep your skin for. Even if you have dry skin, you're going to want to make sure your face is exfoliated and hydrated before you go in because this likes to pick up on anything and everything. But once it does settle down, it is a beautiful foundation. I am going to keep it. Kostas Revealer Foundation. They did a good job on this foundation, making it comparable to the concealer. They are a great team, a great match. It has slightly more coverage than a skin tint. I would say you can get up to medium coverage with it and it's lightweight on the skin, so I'm gonna keep it. Summer Fridays Skin Tint. I actually really enjoy this and I like the shade, number one. 
and we are about to get into warmer months so I think I'm going to be using it a lot more often. I know it's not expired yet so I'm going to keep it. The Jones Road What the Foundation controversial product right here. Looks all congealed and co coagulated. They do say that you have to mix it up. I just find that even for my dry skin it's a little too oily. Uh, it should have been maybe in a pump or a squeeze tube just something to where the consumer didn't actually have to get in there and stir it themselves they could have massaged a tube or something it's messy and it didn't last for uh, hardly at all on my skin i would say by an hour it was ready to vacate my face so i'm going to get rid of that true botanicals everyday skin tint in the shade one this is beautiful has like skincare quality ingredients good for your skin has spf 30 going to keep Fit Glow a Beauty Foundation. I'm going to keep, but I need to double check and make sure it's not expired. I don't remember when they sent it to me. If it's not expired, I'm keeping it. If it is, I'm going to pass it along. Or if it is, I'm going to put it in the garbage. Quick little angle change because I was tired of sanding. Moving on to the Diffusion Dew Radiant Skin Tint from Make Beauty. This is fairly new to me. I like the formula, even though it does have little bits of glitter in it. So does this and people love it, but I like this more. So if you're going for the Makeup by Mario effect, but it didn't work for you, I would say try out the, Mil uh, the Make Radiant Skin Tint. Moving on to the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint. This is beautiful and I absolutely love it for warmer months. However, mine is expired. It expired in January, so I'm going to say goodbye. Rare Beauty's Skin Tint is one that I actually learned to love. Mine doesn't expire until September, so I'm going to keep it. The Air Perez Oat Milk, Found Oat Milk Foundation is quite beautiful it definitely feels more like a skin tint i'm in the shade latte i believe i got mine off of amazon maybe even their site i between everything else i don't really reach for it that much and i do think this shade it might be deep enough for a family member to use so i'm going to pass it along the rose ink skin enhanced luminous tinted serum is none of those things <laughs> Other than being a tinted serum, it doesn't make your skin look luminous. It actually emphasizes dry places on my skin, but that just could be me. So I'm going to pass it along. I think it's sheer enough to work for a range of people. And then the Cali Ray Free Dreaming Skin Tint. I like this. This is, the shade is The Two, which is interesting. I like the formula. I'm going to keep it. The Tower 28 Sunny Days Tinted SPF is my favorite tinted SPF, my favorite skin tint. You can get sheer to medium coverage with this. Uh, it's great for eczema prone skin, acne prone skin. It doesn't feel heavy, doesn't gather in fine lines, doesn't crack and cake. I just I already have a backup ready and waiting. I love it so much. The Westman Atelier skin tint, however, was a flop for me, y'all. It didn't really do all that much for the price. The packaging is actually really sleek and beautiful. I took this traveling with me because it just like is like a little credit card. Boop, it just fit into the small space. But I just, I know I'm not going to reach for it. And it might just be something that I sit on the shelf to look pretty, but I'm not going to keep using it. Put it right there for now. This is a heartbreaker and when I come off my no buy I'm going to repurchase it because this is one of my favorite foundations. The Triple Fix Serum Foundation from LYS. Glowy, medium to full coverage, sits well on dry skin, lasts at least six hours. I just can't say enough good things. However, mine is two years old. It is expired, and I know it is because I looked back on my Instagram stories, and I was like, oh no. Shelf life is nine months. Woo, nine, that's a short window for a whole bottle of foundation, y'all. So that's also just something to consider, but I have to say goodbye. <laughs> very, very sad. Pure Elise. Aegis Glow BB Serum. I read those words backwards. 
and this is the shade Fair. I like this, and I'm going to keep this because I need to play with it more. I like a higher SPF factor. I'm going to wear SPF underneath, but it, also, it makes me feel a little better. I might take this traveling with me soon. And this one doesn't expire until 2024. Thank you for putting the expiry date on there. It just helps so much. Uh, another favorite, but I never, ever, 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 ever mention it, <laughs> um, is the Purito Sika Clearing BB Cream. This looks so good on my skin, guys. Oh my goodness. But the shade range is so abysmal that I never share it. If you are between ghost and pale i'm in the shade number 21 you're going to look at it and be like wow that looks great but it's going to even out and like almost mimic the color of your skin long story short i like it but i'm not currently using it because i can't really share it on my socials or anything like that so i'm going to have to say goodbye this is the beauty care naturals second skin foundation this has been a favorite for since 2020. Second Skin is the best way to describe it. It looks gorgeous, absolutely. I know mine's expired, so I'm going to have to pass it, I mean, pa yeah, pass it along to the trash. Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue. This, I can get this to work, but it's not my favorite. I just, I don't like the texture, I don't like, how I have to like tap it in extra with my fingers and a sponge and a brush, like have to call in everybody to make it work. I'm going to pass along. This was a Julia Adams influence. This is the Super Smoother Skin Tint by Iconic London. And I like it. I do believe I'm going to keep it so I can continue using it and kind of getting my full thoughts on it. I've used it for a couple videos. I've definitely used it on Instagram. And I don't remember hating it, so I'm going to keep it. <laughs> I have the Monica Blender Beauty Blender Cover. I am in the shade 1. And this is like a cream. I like having this around when I'm too lazy to put on a liquid. I can just dab in here, cover some spots that I need to dab, and then go over with some powder. So it is helpful to have. I'm going to keep Beauty Blender Bounce Skin Tint. I believe I used this in a video not too long ago. And I'm going to have to pass it to the trash because I know it's expired. And it's not sitting as well as I know it can and has before in the past. The Lip Bar Just a Tint Skin Conditioner. I love this formula, y'all. It really sits so nicely on the skin. Mine doesn't expire until 2025, so I'm keeping it. The Say say beauty slip tint is just okay for me to be honest the texture of it is kind of leaning towards the joan road jones road where you can tell that it has an oil in it and it's not long lasting on the skin but it is a tinted sunscreen it's meant to be reapplied mine doesn't expire until this july so i'm going to keep it until then and then get rid of it so if i've used it all yay if i haven't touched it again since then also yay because the ulta beauty tinted moisturizer spf 24 is an exact formula dupe for the say slip tint i did a whole reel on it they feel and look exactly the same on my skin and this one doesn't expire and this one doesn't expire until march of 2024 so i'ma keep it moving on to concealers first kaja beauty don't settle concealer light to sheer to light coverage i've used it all over as foundation before that's how much i like the formula staying Flower Beauty Get Real Serum Concealer. Fairly new in my collection, but I like how it sits under my eyes, so staying. Pure Lease BB Concealer Oil-Free Moisturizing. I don't ever hardly use this, so this is the shade Fair. I'm gonna pass it along. The Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue Brightening Concealer. I do like this concealer, but 
I think I might use it for low makeup days, so I will keep it for now. I have two shades of the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer. Anything Huda Beauty makes me think full coverage, but these concealers are actually really nice. It's described as a luminous matte finish, which I don't know what that means, but I have a super light shade and then a skin tone shade. I'm going to keep both because I can use that super light shade for foundations that might be a little deep for me or some extra highlighting. Costa Surveiller Concealer is one of my favorites. Hydrating, creamy, sits well underneath my dry under eyes. Be advised, this has a six month shelf life. They did just introduce a mini because they recognized that a lot of their consumers were not using the product within six months. So it would go bad and have a funky smell. So if you have a full size one, just give it a good sniff before you use it. If it smells like Play-Doh or plastic, or blue cheese, then it's time to toss it. But mine is still good, so I'm gonna keep it. The NYX Bear With Me Serum Concealer is another favorite of mine. I would say it's actually pretty comparable to the Kosas Concealer. This one will give you a little bit more coverage. I like it, I love it. Also, something to note, this also has a six month life, but because it has that pump, the airless pump, you might could stretch it a little longer. My Pacifica Dream Lit Glow Concealer. This is a smash hit from Pacifica. I love how this concealer looks on my skin, so I'm gonna keep it. My Beauty Care Naturals Concealer. I've had it for quite some time. I think I bought it as soon as they launched. So it's probably at least a year old. I'm just not using it, so I'm gonna get rid of it. I feel comfortable passing this along because it's in a squeeze tube, but things with a doe foot, I'm just gonna go ahead and toss. This is my Skin Mimetic Concealer from Make Beauty. I love this. I wish it was a little more pink instead of yellow, but I could definitely can make it work, especially with their skin tint. The formula is fantastic. Keeping. The Pure Push Up Concealer. This is a good medium to full coverage concealer. However, I think this one I'm holding here is expired because it smells like it, so I'm gonna get rid of that. The CoverGirl True Blend Undercover Concealer. I hear everybody loving this. It's compared a lot to Shape Tape, but it was too dry for my under eyes, so I'm going to get rid of it. This is one of my all-time favorite concealers, the Rare Beauty Brightening Concealer. I'm in the shade 140C. It is not as thick and creamy as Kosas. It's a little thinner in texture, but it provides the same finish and it really does brighten on my skin. I, I love it so much. I've had like, I don't know, four or five of these. The Pacifica Liquid Full Coverage Lasting Concealer. I would give this more of a medium, a high medium coverage than full, but it is still pretty nice. I like the Dreamlit one better, so I'm going to keep that one and pass this one along. Milk Makeup Future Fluid All Over Cream Concealer. I like this. I can't use it all over my skin because I got the shade 2C and it is actually very light, so I can use it for some brightening here and there, but it sits nicely, lasts a long time. I'm going to keep it. The Say Beauty Hydra Beam. I have the shade The One. They've recently come out with a lighter shade. This one wasn't too deep for me per se, but it wasn't very brightening like Hydra Beam suggests. And the coverage is just pretty sheer to light. I kept it in my bathroom, used it on low makeup days, but to me it's not under or overwhelming, it just is. So I'm going to get rid of it. The Rare Beauty Brighten Eye Brightener. I have the shade Light. I'm going to keep this and instead of using the Hydra Beam for low or no makeup makeup days, I will be using this. This is the Tarte Power Flex Concealer. I'm in the shade 12B Light Beige. I like it. It looks fine underneath my eyes. I just um, don't really need it, so I'm going to get rid of it. 
Jones Road, the face pencil. Not necessarily a concealer, but like a complexion product. I got the shade two. I hardly ever use it, to be honest. And it is a little dry, a little tugging on my skin, so I'm gonna get rid of it. I can pass this along to a family member because I can spray it with alcohol and sharpen it and then spray it with alcohol again. The Milk Makeup Sunshine Skin Tint Under Eye Brightener, I'm going to get rid of. I just don't like it. Um, you know, I have a lot of options here, and if it's not a favorite or it's not a unique texture, then it needs to go. So that's really the only reason. It's fine. It's just fine. Also gonna get rid of my Rose Ink Concealer. I just find this a little too drying and doesn't sit as well under my eyes as I would like it to, and it's very expensive, so. The Lip Bar Quick Conceal. This is a really nice light to medium coverage concealer. It, uh, I wanna say like it sinks well under my eyes, but that I don't mean it like it disappears. It just sits nicely and doesn't require a lot of powdering. It's a great drugstore option. I'm keeping. The Honest Beauty Concealer Fresh Flex Concealer. I'm in the shade Ivory. It has a glass bottle. It feels super nice, but when it comes down to formula, it's just okay. It's a little heavy under my eyes, so I'm passing it to the garbage. <laughs> My LYS concealer is still good to go. It says full coverage brightening concealer. It is not full coverage. It's definitely more like a light coverage, but I do like the way it looks under my eyes, so I'm keeping it. This Mad Hippie concealer in the shade 10, it is a little too heavy. My under eyes have to be super hydrated, and I'm at the point in my life where I just don't wanna fuss with stuff, so I'm passing it along. I have three under eye products from Fit Glow, the concealer in C1, concealer in C2, and the peach color corrector. I can tell by the smell. I'm getting a strong Play-Doh smell, and it's quite off-putting. These are definitely expired, so I'm gonna get rid of them, but they're a lovely, beautiful, fantastic formula, especially for more mature or dry skin. Um, this is a holy grail for me. This is the Ulta Beauty Color Correcting Concealer in the shade Pink. It is a dupe for another one of my holy grail favorites, which is the EXA High Fidelity Color Corrector in the shade Pink. These two are very similar on my very pale skin tone, and the Ulta Beauty one is a little bit more brightening, has a little bit more coverage, but these are both fantastic keeping for sure. Then I have the Pixi Correction Concentrate in Bright Peach. Just a peachy under eye corrector and it is a little too peachy for my skin tone. You can see it and you can also still see my blue underneath it. So while it's okay, I am gonna pass it along. Then I have the Beauty Pie Under Eye Genius Color Corrector. This is a fantastic formula. It is an it is an exact dupe for the Becca Under Eye Brightener. Now Smashbox sells it, but exact dupe, and this was $10, so go get you one keeping. Next, I have the Ethereal Veil Conceal and Cover in the shade NYX. I just don't use it very much because the formula isn't something that just like jives super well with my skin. It has to be really prepped and hydrated because a cream is a little thicker. My skin tend to prefers more pigmented concealers that are very thin. So I'm going to pass this along. And then last but not least is another color corrector from Ulta. This is just their under eye brightener in the shade light to medium. That same pinky undertone is just you know, a convenient cream formula. Um, it's very nice. I'm gonna keep it. The last on the docket for today is gonna be my powders. We will get into the rest of the face products 
eye products, all of it, but we will have to break it up in sections for sure. So this is my e.l.f. Camo Powder Foundation. I am in the shade Fair 125C. I love this. I'm keeping it. I like especially to use it when I'm wearing a skin tint, but I need to cover a blemish. I'll go over with this. The love it. Love Pure Powder Foundation. Mine expired in 2021, y'all. <laughs> so it is time to get rid of it. It's a nice powder, but I have, you know, barely scratched the surface in two years. It's time to let it go, Elsa. This is the Make Beauty Diffusion Set Translucent Powder. A gorgeous powder. I love Make Beauty formulas. I'm keeping. This is the Beauty Pie One Powder Wonder Perfecting Powder. It's just a translucent powder. Think like that crystal powder from NARS. It does have like an illuminating property to it. I've only used it once or twice, so I'm gonna keep playing with it. Then moving on to my CoverGirl Clean Fresh Powder. I am in the shade 100 Translucent. Claimed to be a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder, and it does give you the same finish. So you don't have to spend your money. Thank you, CoverGirl. I'm keeping this one. And another favorite is the LYS Translucent Powder. I am in the shade Resilience. And this one I have said is a closer dupe than the CoverGirl one to Charlotte Tilbury. This one is even closer. Definitely check it out. Keeping that. This is the Jane Iredale Powder Foundation. I am in, I believe it's Ivory, the lightest shade. I have fallen in love with this. Using their primer, this, and their setting spray all together, I did not expect a powder foundation to look so much like skin, but I love this, keeping this for sure. Then moving on to my Kosas Cloud Set Powder. I've used this quite a bit. It's got a nice healthy dent into it. I like this. These powders are not translucent though. This will give you some coverage, but it does sit well. It sets the face without sucking the glow out of it. So I do like it and I'm gonna keep it. I do need to put it in the front so I know to use it more though. A probably top three powder of mine is the Rare Beauty Powder. Mine's in the shade Light. I love it. It doesn't look cakey. It doesn't look dry. Keeping it. And then another good powder is the Fade Into You Powder from Ilia. Very finely milled, very thin on the skin. We'll be keeping that. This new clean invisible powder from CoverGirl is unremarkable to me. It's, I mean, it's new. It just came out in the past couple months and they really could have done a lot more. I'm just gonna pass it along. I don't really care for it. My 14E powder is probably expired. This is such a good powder. I'm sad to have to get rid of it because it's very, very, I would say this one is very much like the Ilia powder. The Alima Pure Radiant Finishing Powder. This is a glowy finishing powder, adds radiance to the skin. I'm gonna keep it. This is the Say Translucent Radiant Loose Setting Powder. I actually think I'm gonna keep this one from Say and pass on the one from Alima Pure because I know this one's fairly new. And then I do enjoy the e.l.f. Halo Glow Powder. I'm in the pink shade. I've got some things to compare to this. So I always love having a really affordable drugstore option. So I've got CoverGirl and e.l.f. and they're staying. You can stay in the collection. Huda Beauty recently sent me this powder. It's the Easy Bake Powder. Mine's in the shade Sugar Cookie. This formula is fantastic. I've heard people raving about this powder, but I didn't know until I tried it myself. It is absolutely gorgeous. It doesn't make my skin look dry and cakey, which was a surprise. I love it. Keeping it forever and ever, amen. This powder from Fit Glow can also be one that replaces my 14E. This is the most 
thin powder I've ever put on my face. You don't feel like you're wearing anything. It truly is invisible and helps everything last. It has hyaluronic acid in it. I love it, keeping it for sure. And Westman Atelier, this is the Vital Skin Pressed Powder in the shade Bubble because it's pink. And I just like having a pink powder that is in a pressed form because that's pretty rare. And I love this powder, especially under my eyes. And then I recently have tried the Extraordinary Translucent Powder from Ciate London. It came in the Robert Welsh curated box and it is wonderful. It also is really translucent. It didn't make my skin look dry and cakey. Um, however, comma, I feel like if I keep this one, I need to get rid of another one. So I'm just gonna put it to the side here for a moment and go over these last two. I have the Translucent Cloud Finishing Powder from Silk Naturals, as well as the Close-Up Illuminating Power Powder from Silk Naturals. And they're not joking when they say illuminating. This is almost like a highlighter, so I'm going to pass it along. I'm also going to pass along the Silk Naturals Translucent Powder because I have so many. So, I don't need to have both the Ilia and the Fit Glow powders because they're so because they're so similar in texture. I just have a really good rapport with Fit Glow and talk to them on a regular basis. So I'm gonna keep the Fit Glow one. They're basically the same powder. I need a reason to keep one. That's as good a reason as any, isn't it? So that means I will keep this one from Ciate. And that's it for the powders. I'm gonna pass along one, two, three, four, five. Throw away two and the rest are staying home with mama. Gross. And that is part one of many declutters to come. As always, be blessed and be kind, and we will speak again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye. You need to do a toy declutter. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> She's like, I'm uh, not looking at you, so I didn't hear it. <laughs>